got an interesting one for you today. Now, this one's nice, nice and simple, but it can catch you out. It's one of those. This vehicle had been into the garage for a repair on the lighting system. The passenger side rear light keeps failing. Driver's side working, passenger side not. And it's been an intermittent issue and they, they thought it was down to the wiring or something on those lines. So they've had a really good look at this van, thought they'd sorted it out, but the problems reoccurred. So anyway, I've managed to get me uh, get my hands on it and have a look and see if I can find out what's wrong with it. Now then, first things first, basic investigation. As you can see, the driver's side rear light is on. The passenger side is off. So straight away, we're going to have a look at this passenger side. Now then, as soon as I release the lamp unit, as soon as I take the screw out the top and move it back, it all comes back to life again. So as you can see, this light on the top here is not working. It's got this Torx bit on the top, so we'll whiz this screw out of here, which then just releases the top of the light unit and we can just pull it back, revealing the wiring loom at the bottom. Straight away, you can see the light has now come on and it's lit at the top. So it's really good news because straight away, we've isolated that fault to the passenger side rear light unit or the wiring associated to it so let's carry on let's dig a bit deeper so let's have a look at that connector plug is the plug okay we can just disconnect that have a look at it so we grab hold of it and just push the little release clip on the top and pull the connector away it comes out really easy which is a good sign and as you can see all of the terminals there are as clean as a whistle there's no discoloration or melting and again with the light cluster there everything looks fantastic all the contacts inside are absolutely perfect there's no there's no um, corrosion or um, burnt wires or anything in there everything looks fine it's not overheated or anything the wires don't look like they've chafed on anything so we can pretty much eliminate that from the equation let's release the bulbs from the light unit let's pull away the back of the light it's nice and simple release the clips out it pops let's have a look at the bulbs now then straight away you can see that that stop tail light bulb has got a blackened tinge to it so here we've got as bulbs and you can see that top one there has got a real blackened tinge to the glass We'll look at the others, they all look absolutely fine. The connections look good, but that bulb is definitely black and got something going on. Now then, how does a bulb work? This is the simple stuff. You've really just got to go back to basics. Although the bulb is lit, it's working, it's got a black tinge to it. Now, the only way a bulb can get a black tinge is if something inside has gone wrong. Now, these bulbs, when they're made, they're, they're, they have the air sucked out of them, so they have a vacuum and then they're filled with like an argon nitrogen mix and it's got a little tungsten fil uh, filament inside there so when these bulbs wear because of the gases and stuff that's inside the element evaporates as it evaporates it sticks to the bulb of the glass so if you see black on a bulb you know that bulb is almost had it or there's something going on inside there arcing of some sort that's causing this evaporation of the element and for it to stick to the glass. What we're going to do straight away is have a really close look at that bulb and you can see inside that the filaments, one of them is kinked, it's got a little kink to it. So let's grab hold of this bulb, we push it into the connector, twist anti-clockwise and out it comes. You can see the two little prongs on the bottom, one is higher than the other, this bulb will only go in one way. So be sure to put it back in the right way when you're refitting it. Now here we go, look, we can have a really close look at this. And you can see the top filament there has got a kink in it. If I show you the new bulb here, look, they're both dead straight. One of them's the tail light, one of them's the stop brake light. And you can see that there, the difference in the two. And the kink in that filament is where it's actually broke. And if I compare it to the new one, you can see that that's got two dead straight filaments inside it. Now then, these bulbs, 
any car that's got a bulb in it, if the filament's got a kink, the chances are that filament is cracked and is arcing back together again. As soon as it arcs back together, the bulb will stay lit for a reasonable amount of time sometimes, but then you go over a bump, it separates, bulb goes out. You move that light unit, it separates, bash it, it'll stick back together again, arc, and the thing will work again. So it's a really simple electrical diagnosis, but it can be easily missed. So here we go, let's pop the bulb back in. This is a new bulb going, and you can see the connections down the bottom there. We're just checking them to make sure that they've got no uh, corrosion or they're distorted. We push that bulb in, like I say, making sure you get it in the right way around. A little bit tricky, twist it clockwise to get it back in. We clip that back into the light cluster unit. It just pings in beautiful. That's nicely fitted. Connect the plug back up. Clipping that in, and we can all see now that the wires, the wires all free, and it's not chafing. And there's the bulb lit. We just took that loom back through the hole, so the light cluster fits up nice and tight. We don't want any water getting in there and causing us any condensation in the light unit. So we just push that up, and then that light unit will fit back up nice and tight. And we'll pop the torx bit back in. You haven't got to go mad with these screws into the plastic, just, just nip them up. And there it is, glowing like a good one. Turn the light back off, job's done. And that's all it was. We've replaced that bulb in the back, everything's fine. So this guy's been into the garage, had a massive bill for his van to be fixed, and all it was was a bulb that was blown and just intermittently arcing and touching back together again. Replace it, everything's absolutely fine. A really, really daft one. <laughs> Just take this a step further. If your car, if you've got one of these cars now, a lot of modern cars have got bulb warning diagnosis on them. You probably, especially on the BMWs, you get that bulb warning light coming on telling you've got a blown bulb. You walk around the car and everything's on. You're going, oh, what's going on here? What's going on with these? this warning system it's not working it's telling me something's wrong and it's not these bulbs when the filament evaporates it wears the resistance changes within the bulb the car senses the resistance of the lighting circuit to tell you if there's a fault brings the light on simple as that's all it can be change your bulbs just take to all the check all the bulbs if you've got any of them that are shown slightly black replace it Nine times out of ten cures your problem. So, I hope that's been of use to you. Um, it's a simple, simple one. Bulb diagnosis. Even if it's working, if it's black, chuck it out, get a new one. I hope that's been of use. Drop me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. Love your comments. Uh, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.